Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Seeger Design M-Series Magician. This watch will be available from August on Indiegogo.com. The price has yet to be confirmed. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with a piece. So as with all Seeger Design watches, the watch comes in a watch box, which is in the style of a book. As you can see, the sleeve to the book has holes in it, and the letters spell out the word Magician, which is the name of this M-Series watch. So very nice presentation, and it makes a credible change from the default options of using a plastic or cardboard watch box. I like the style of Seeger Design watch boxes in a book. We have the design inside the front cover, and it says the magic on your wrist, because this is the Magician. And then inside the first page, we have a design of the movements and also the three interchangeable cases, which I'll show you. And then there's a plastic cover, which protects the cutouts for the movements and also the three cases and the fluoro rubber strap. So I've removed one of the cases, the movement and the fluoro rubber strap and assembled the watch. But in my review, I will also show you the other two stainless steel cases and we'll test them out. Now in the back cover, there's also some interesting information about Zhang Jiamin. Zhang Jiamin founded Seeker Design in 2016 and he has won a plethora of awards. He's one of China's top 10 uh, industrial designers and also it details the plethora of awards that Ying Xin has won and Ying Xin is the Seeker Design chief product designer. And then we also have all the awards they've won, most uh, notably they won the GPHG Challenger Award, which is an incredible achievement for a Chinese brand. I previously reviewed the Blue Planet piece, which was their GPHD award-winning Challenger piece. And for a Chinese brand to win a Challenger Award at the GPHG in Geneva really was an incredible achievement because they were competing with the very best of Swiss brands. And I really think it represents the quality of Seeker Design. So as you can see, it also has clear, concise diagrams, instructions in English, and it details how to change the cases. And it also even details how to change the fluoro rubber strap using the quick release spring bar. So very well crafted, clear, concise diagrams, clear instructions, and it details the terms and conditions of the 12 month international warranty. So with a watch, one also gets this warranty card and it details the terms and conditions. So I really think the presentation is outstanding and I prefer it to a plastic or cardboard watch box. So with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Sega Design M-Series Magician. We have a 46 millimeter diameter case. We have a 52.3 millimeter lug to lug measurement, a thickness of 10.8 millimeters, and a lug width of 22 millimeters. The fluoro rubber strap tapers from 22 millimeters at the lugs down to the buckle and tang. And as you can see, the stainless steel buckle and tang, which is brass satin finish, is signed to a high standard with Seeger design engraved. Nice heavy gauge of metal to the buckle and tang. And I like the angular profile, no sharp edges, no burrs. It's finished to a very high standard. Two keepers on the fluoro rubber strap, one's fixed, one slides as one would expect. One detail I like is there are two notches either side on the flanks to the fluoro rubber strap and the two notches prevent the first keeper from sliding out of position when one engages the keeper in between those teeth. So it works very well because it secures one of the keepers in position but it allows the second keeper to float up and down the strap. So I'll show you the underside to it, as you can see. There's a nice cutout scallop, and that allows for air circulation and sweat and perspiration to wick away from the wrist, so very nice attention to detail. And then on the other side, the buckle and tang side, we've got Seeger Design embossed. So this is made from fluoro rubber. Now, fluoro rubber is stiffer and more durable than silicon rubber, so therefore it's not going to split and crack around the spring bar, which is often an area that silicon rubber straps fail. So I would describe it as softer than vulcanized rubber, as per rubber B straps, which you might be familiar with, but it's stiffer than a silicon rubber strap. So fluoro rubber, which is a very good material because it's soft and supple, but also it's comfortable to wear. It really is the perfect compromise between a soft silicon rubber strap and a harder um, vulcanized rubber strap. And I really like the texture of it. It's perfectly smooth on the top side and the underside, nice matte finish to it. Feels very flexible, but also stiff enough to be durable. Plenty of holes in the straps allow for fine tuning the length to get the perfect fit. And 
I like the fact they've used quick release stainless steel spring bars because I'm often critical in my reviews of brands using conventional spring bars and sometimes it's a tight fit to get a spring bar tool in between the edge of the strap and the interior of the lugs. But with the quick release spring bars, one doesn't need a spring bar tool to change the strap. So very well thought through design. With regards to the rest of the specification, we have a flat sapphire crystal which has AR coating on the underside. And when I tilt the piece at an oblique angle, you can see the anti-reflective coating does an excellent job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the mirror polished skeletonized hands. And also it has a matte bead blasted effect to the bridges to the movement, which are fully skeletonized. But it's a highly reflective piece that so really does benefit from the use of anti-reflective coating on the underside. The screwed down case back provides an effective hermetic seal to 30 meters of water resistance, which is perfectly acceptable for a daily wear piece. And it's also glazed with sapphire crystal. So as you can see, there's no AR coating on the sapphire crystal in the case back, but there is on the front of the piece and that's perfectly acceptable. We have four flat head screws securing the stainless steel exhibition case back to the head of the piece. With regards to the case, it's made from solid 316L grade stainless steel and as you can see, matte finish throughout. It's got a beautiful brush satin finish to the flanks. I like the angular profile to it. One thing I like about this Seeker design piece, the M Series Magician, is this is an original design. Every aspect of this piece is completely original. It's not an homage to anything else. And even the movement used, the skeletonized design, is completely original. And I like the fact that Seeker Design are coming up with their own designs rather than just making homage watches. With regards to the crown, it's knurled finish, solid 316L grade stainless steel. And as you can see, it's signed to a high standard with Seeger. So let's test the crown execution. Push-pull crown, which provides an effective hermetic seal to 30 meters. So in the closed position, one can manually wind the movement, which is the Seeger Design CD03, to top it up to its maximum 40 hour power reserve. One can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up. Absolute pleasure to manually wind it. Pulling it out to the first click position is the time setting position and one can feel the resistance of the gearing. There's a lot of friction in the gearing but it feels like a good solid movement. No back play both clockwise and anti-clockwise it feels like a good solid tight movement and I like the feeling of it. It feels very solid and I like the fact there's no back play rotating the crown clockwise or anti-clockwise. So the movement has hacking, as you can see, if you look at the balance wheel through the skeletonized movement, you can see I have now stopped the balance wheel dead. So it's possible to set the time precisely to the second. Now, as you can see, there is no second hand on the Seeger Design Calibre CD03. That's because if you look at the gear on the Canon pinion, the gear effectively is the second hand. If I press back in the crown, it restarts the movement with a nice positive click. And if you look closely on that gear, which sits on the top of the Canon pinion, as opposed to a second hand, you can see the gear rotates at precisely 60 rotations per minute. So effectively, that gear is the second hand and it's a novel feature. And I think it adds to the aesthetic of the skeletonized movements. Now, with regards to the hands, they're silver mirror polished. They are loomed, as I'll demonstrate in the loom test but I think that they would contrast better with the skeletonized movement if they were anodized a different color, alternatively painted a different color, or alternatively infilled with loom, because it is quite difficult to read the skeletonized hands because of their mirror polished uh, finish. And I think that if they were a different color, one could register the hands against the bezel. So the bezel is also solid 316L grade stainless steel and as you can see it's relief bezel so we have minute ticks and we also have Arabic numerals and it's a very well executed well finished matte bead blasted effect to the bezel. The quality of the finishing to the bezel and the head of the piece is excellent throughout. No sharp edges, no burrs and it really does look like a futuristic watch with the angular profiles to it and I also like the recesses, the cutouts in the flanks. It really is a very well thought through design and again, completely original. So difficult to read the mirror polished hands against the skeletonized movement, but however, it does fit the aesthetic. Now, if you look at the movements, you can see it is completely transparent and it looks like the movement is actually floating inside the case. And it's something I really like about the piece. The fact that if you look around the movement holder ring, it's completely transparent. One can see all the way through it and it really does look like it floats inside the case 
rather than having a conventional plastic, alternatively stainless steel movement holder ring. And I really like that aspect of the Magician. Uh, I think it really does make it a unique piece, the fact that one can see through the movement around the circumference of it. And it's just an incredible feat of engineering, as you can see, absolutely beautiful to look at. So I like the skeletonization of it, although the hands are difficult to read. The actual movement itself is very well finished. The bridges to the movement are very well detailed, very well finished. And it's just an absolute delight to look at the escapement, the balance wheel running, and of course that 60 second gear, uh, which replaces the second hand running on the cannon pinion. It's absolutely gorgeous. The rotor is very well finished. As you can see, it has milled stripes on it, which look like Coates de Genève. And it's just absolutely gorgeous to look at the movement through the Sapphire Crystal Exhibition case back. Just beautiful. Right, so I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now, minor criticism is the strap is just a fraction too short for my 8 inch wrist. I can just engage it in both of the keepers, but I would prefer if this was just half an inch longer. But however, for the majority of collectors with a 6 to 7 inch wrist, this fluoro rubber strap will fit no difficulty whatsoever. So as you can see, although it's a large piece and it does wear with wrist presence because it's a 46 millimeter case with a rather long lug to lug measurement of 52.3, it's surprisingly comfortable. It feels very well balanced because it's only 112 grams on the fluoro rubber strap. They've got the taper of the strap correct, 22 millimeters, gradually tapering down to the buckle and sang. So the weight of the head of the piece is well distributed across the 22 millimeter lug width. It actually wears more like a 40 or 42 millimeter, even though it's a 46. The angular case is deceptive because it actually tapers down the head of the piece. So it does really wear more like a 42 on wrist. But I would say to you, if you're a collector with a smaller wrist of 6 to 7 inches, you may find that this wears with too much wrist presence. And you may find the 52.3 millimeter lug to lug measurement to be too long. I consider 48 millimeters to be the sweet spot. That is the perfect lug to lug measurement. So at 52.3, it does well exceed the 48 millimeter sweet spot. But however, if you have a larger wrist of seven to eight inches, you may enjoy the wrist presence of a 46 millimeter head of the piece and the longer 52.3 millimeter lug to lug measurement. Now the thing to note, and the thing that most surprised me about this is it is only 10.9 millimeters thick. Usually with automatic pieces, they need to have a 13 millimeter thickness in order to house the movement and also the rotor within the exhibition case back. But this is only 10.9 and it's a credit to Sega Design to be able to make an automatic piece powered by the Calibre CD03 at only 10.9 millimeters. That's the kind of thickness one would expect to see with a manual wind movement or alternatively a quartz powered piece rather than an automatic with a rotor on the underside. So it's a large piece, it's a long case, it's a wide case, uh, but it is lightweight, 112 grams, and also only 10.9 millimeters thick. So it will easily slip underneath the shirt cuff, uh, despite being a large piece. Comfortable to wear, very aesthetically pleasing, and as you can see, it does benefit from AR coating on the underside of the sapphire crystal. Right, so let's do a loom test, and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged. And as you can see, it's actually surprised my expectations because this uses skeletonized hands. And usually the problem with skeletonized hands is they don't allow for large area, large loom plot uh, for the C3 Superloom Nova or BGW9 to be applied. So as you can see, this clearly uses C3 Superluminova. It's glowing incredibly brightly and it will continue, continue to glow for a good length of time. Now, another surprise is the gear, which replaces the second hand sitting on top of the cannon pinion, is also fully loomed with Superluminova. And as you can see, in the dark, it becomes very easy to read the time because there's a slight difference in the length of the minute and hour hand. So one can clearly orientate the minute and hour hand. And also, if you look at that, 60 minute gear on the Canon pinion, you can see it rotating at precisely 60 seconds per revolution. So it's very well thought through. And I actually like it. So I think that the gear makes a refreshing alternative to using a second hand. Now, the only thing I would like to see is 
it's a shame that they didn't use some applied indices. I appreciate this is difficult with the magician's design, the Calibre CD03, because it's a skeletonized movement and we don't have a dial on the movement. It's fully skeletonized. We just have skeletonized bridges. But it would have made it easier to orientate the dial, which is invisible effectively, if it had some registers, if it had some indices on the bridges to the skeletonized movement. Effectively, the bezel on the case becomes the register. It becomes the chapter ring or the indexing. One registers the hour and minute hand too. But in the dark, one can read the time because, as you can see, the C3 Superluminova is glowing very brightly and it's very good performance. This is clearly five to six layers rather than using the cost cutting measure of two to six layers. And I think that it looks very aesthetically pleasing, although it does take some getting used to reading the watch in the dark, as you can see, without indices uh, to register the minute and hour hand against. But very aesthetically pleasing and good quality Superluminova. Right, so let's discuss the movement used. So, as discussed, this uses the Seeger Design CD03. The CD03 has 25 joules, it runs at 21,600 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 3 hertz. 40 hour power reserve is perfectly acceptable, it has hand winding and hacking, which are used for complications, and it's an absolute pleasure to manually wind it. I like the fact it's got hacking. And as you can see, the skeletonized rotor is finished to a very high standard with milled stripes and the bridges to the skeletonized movements are also finished to a very high standard. So very good to get an automatic in a piece that is only 10.9 millimeters thick. I would expect this piece to be 13 millimeters. If it were a manual wind piece, I would expect 10.9, but really to get a, a watch under 11 millimeters that is automatic with a rotor is an incredible achievement and it's something that Seeger Design deserve full credit for. The CD03 is a reliable and accurate movement. This one is running consistently at plus five seconds per day, which is actually within cost chronometer limits of minus four to plus six. So 40 hour power reserve and plus five is perfectly acceptable, reliable, accurate, no negatives to the CD03 whatsoever. And of course, it is very aesthetically pleasing because as you can see, as, as, as the name suggests, magician, it looks like the, the movement is floating within the case. One doesn't have a stainless steel or nylon movement holder ring. And I think it's just absolutely gorgeous the way it appears to float in midair. Right, so let's take off the strap. Now, to facilitate this, to make it easier, I'm going to remove my glove because I want to actually test out these different cases and see how easy is it to actually change the cases. So in order to change the case, one has to remove the strap. It has quick release spring bars, as I've discussed, so that makes it easier. Now, I'll show you. In between the lugs, you have a press push button. It says push on it, and I'll show you on the other side. You see it says push. So what you do is you press in your fingernail while pressing the front crystal, and then you turn it around, and you do the same again. You press in your fingernail on the button and push the crystal, and actually pops the movements out of the case. Now, I have never seen this on a watch before. I'll just show it to you. Just bear with me. I'll get the camera to focus on the push button and you'll be able to see it better. There we are. So as you can see, it's got a spring-loaded push button and it's got a firm spring in it. One has to push it hard so it's not accidentally going to deploy. And the same on the other side. You can see it's got a push button one has to press it quite hard. So I'll just pick up an alternative case and I'll show you. This is the round case, as you can see. Now the cases are light, but they're made from solid 316L grade stainless steel, which is brush satin finish to a flawless finish. Beautiful brush satin finishing throughout. Every facet of it is done to perfection. No sharp edges, no burrs. That's the round case. One also gets this square case as an alternative to it. And as you can see, also finished to perfection. The flanks are brass satin finish with a matte finish to perfection. No sharp edges, no burrs to it, and it's solid. It's not plated. For example, they could have used the cost-cutting measure of making these cases out of brass and then nickel plating the brass to make it look like stainless steel, but they're not. They're made from solid 316L grade stainless steel. Now, I'll just show you the movement itself. So as you can see, the movement is housed in a stainless steel body and again finished to perfection beautiful brass satin finishing to it and the push button 
uh, buttons are finished to perfection as you can see they've got two screws so potentially they could be changed if they wear out as you can see and I really like the way the movement appears to float within this body so let's try putting it into one of these cases so as you can see at the three o'clock side of the case we have a cutout with a slot for the crown so it's easy to orientate the case there we go and also at the six o'clock side and the 12 o'clock side we also have these nodules and the nodules engage with grooves inside the case so it's easy to orientate so you simply push in and it snaps in the push buttons actually engage as you can see it just snaps into the case now you can tell that it's in because if you push the front crystal the sapphire crystal and try and press it back out again it's locked in it doesn't accidentally come out so I'll just test removing it to see how easy it is to remove. So you press the push button with your fingernail while pressing the crystal on the front. And as you can see, that's disengaged this side. I'll turn it around and do the same with the other side. Press the fingernail on the button and press the crystal out. Now it's disengaged, as you can see, and it just pops out. So I'll just test the square one for consistency and make sure that fits as well. So you simply rotate the case to get the three o'clock crown slot on the same side as the three o'clock on the movement. Put it in, and as you can see, there are two nodules which engage with the grooves in the case, and then you just push it in until it clicks. Same on the other side, push it in and it clicks. So really good engineering because it snaps in very first time without any problems. Easy to get the alignment correct, and one cannot get it wrong because, as you can see, the crown has to fit in the slot in the three o'clock side to the flank of the case. So one can't put it in upside down or back to front, for example. And it snaps in very solidly. I can't actually push that back out without pressing the button. So I'm just going to press the buttons and release this one from the square again. So as you can see, that one's released. Press it again on the other side, and that one's released and it comes apart. Sega Design deserve full credit for this because this is incredible engineering. Now, the price point of this watch, which is going to be released on Indiegogo.com, hasn't yet been determined, but I'm going to base the price point of it on previous Sega Design watches I've reviewed, uh, such as the Z series, and I can tell you, if they retail this at the price, or anything like the price of the Z series, it's going to be an incredibly popular watch. So as you can see, I'm now using this octagon shape case, which is my personal favorite of the three, the round and the square. And I'm just going to test snapping it back in again. So one simply aligns the two nodules with the grooves, presses it back in, nice positive snap. And as you can see, both of the spring-loaded pushers, the buttons have engaged. Absolutely no danger of it coming out. Fantastic, the engineering of this is just really a feat to behold. I think that Sega Design and of course Zhang Jiamin, the founder, really deserves full credit because this is innovative. This is the first time I've seen three interchangeable cases, an octagonal uh, square and round case fitted around the movement and of course the movement floats inside the case as you can see and uh, I just think it's just fantastic. Very aesthetically pleasing, I like all of the cases, but this octagon shaped one with the angular flanks and the cutouts is my personal favourite. So just bear with me, I'll put my gloves back on and then I will finish the review and uh, summarise the piece. So when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch should meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So the price point of this has yet to be determined, but I fully expect it to be similar to the price point of the M series and less expensive than the Blue Planet, which was their flagship piece. And of course it won the GPHG award, which is very prestigious. So I expect the price point to be somewhere between the Blue Planet and somewhere between the M series. Now, if this is retailed at the M series price point, it is going to be unquestionably excellent value and excellent quality. The quality of the finishing to this piece, the engineering, the quality of the movement finishing, and of course the cases which are interchangeable as I've demonstrated all three, 
it's just outstanding. This is the greatest Sega design watch ever made, the M series Magician, and I think it's worth p purchasing as a novelty alone, simply for the design. The push button push uh, triggers are just incredibly well made, and it really is innovative, and I think it's something that we're going to see in the future. Rather than purchasing three watches, this magician gives the option of purchasing one watch, one movement that fits into three different cases. So for example, if you get bored of using an octagonal case, you don't have to buy another watch with a round or square case. Potentially you could just simply change to a round case or a square case and you can see it can be done in a matter of seconds, not minutes, seconds. And of course, because it has a quick release uh, spring bar on the fluoro rubber strap, it's very quick to remove the strap, press the two buttons, remove the movement from the case and refit. Are there any negatives to this piece? Well, the only thing I would like to see Sega Design improve upon is if they fully loomed the skeletonized hands, that would improve their performance. But as you can see in the loom test, they are perfectly adequate. I would like to see them add some registers or indices to the skeletonized movements, the Calibre CD03, because in the absence of a dial, because it's fully skeletonized, some grooves or engravings on the bridge which is skeletonized would make it easier to orientate the minute hand and the hour hand and read the time but of course once it's in the case effectively one can use the bezel with the minute ticks uh, and also the arabic numerals that becomes the chapter ring one uses the fixed bezel to read the time so it does take some getting used to but of course like all watches once one becomes familiar with it it is easy to read the time other than that, the watch has no negatives whatsoever. The quality of the finishing to the head of this piece is the kind of finishing one would expect to see on a Swiss-made piece, a mid-tier piece costing in excess of €3,000. So really, it's just incredible. No sharp edges, no burrs to the case. Beautiful luster to the 316L grade stainless steel. 112 grams on the fluoro rubber strap means it's incredibly comfortable to wear for long periods of time. So I'm going to declare this a champagne watch for lemonade money on the basis that the price point will be similar to the M series and less expensive than the Blue Planet, which is their flagship piece. I'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration. The Indiegogo campaign starts in August and I'm sure you'll be delighted to back it. So I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Seeker Design M series magician. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.